Right, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to this information and data security webinar hosted by IMSN around dealing with the threat landscape in what is, I suppose, now the new normal for a lot of businesses in the way they actually operate. Uh, a bit of housekeeping, we are actually recording this webinar, which will be available for everybody to download and review and share with their colleagues or friends after the webinar. There is a Q&A section uh, within the menu system on the meeting. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. There will be time at the end to cover off any of those questions that you might have as I sort of progress through the presentation. Uh, so my name's Steve Stobo. I'm one of the area managers at IMSM. And my background, I've probably spent the last probably 10, 15 years working for large corporate organizations, uh, helping organizations with uh, cyber security, information security, data management, and helping them get their businesses fit for the future. Uh, we do run a lot of these webinars. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and we're running numerous webinars throughout the year. We will be running them on ISO 9001 for quality. We'll also be running them on uh, health and safety, on environmental, business continuity, medical devices, etc. So feel free to pop along to imsn.com where there'll be details of further upcoming webinars. Also, if you could uh, subscribe and follow IMSM on LinkedIn, uh, we're quite a prolific user of LinkedIn and we do a lot of announcements on future events, uh, training schedules, et cetera, et cetera. So let's begin. We've got quite a busy agenda, but don't worry, it's not death by PowerPoint and also it won't last an hour. So I'm hoping to give you 15 minutes back, depending upon questions at the end of it. But we're going to talk about, you know, why anything? Why is information and data security important? You know, management have a responsibility to an organization, not only to the employees, but to their stakeholders, to their shareholders, et cetera. But what actually is their responsibility regarding this topic of information and data security? Talk about some of the changes and threats. It's not just about the pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic has caused a major change and a huge uplift in cyber attacks that we're seeing out there in the market uh, and seeing with lots and lots of different organizations being targeted by the nefarious group of hackers trying to infiltrate your information and data and use it to try and monetize to make them money or for blackmail purposes, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll talk a little bit about the sorts of changes and threats. There are obviously options to protect information and data within an organization. And I'll cover off what they are. You know, they're typically Cyber Essentials, Cyber Essentials Plus, and obviously the main topic of this agenda, which is ISO 27001. You know, talk about why now? Why is it important to look at this now? You know, we're all very, very busy people, uh, but, you know, why is it important to do it now, to look at information and data security? Obviously, I want to talk about why IMSN and our experience and how we actually work as an organization and how we uh, can help you on the journey to getting better information and data security within your organizations. Quick summary and conclusion at the end, and then we will open it up for a Q&A session. So just make sure there's no questions before I start. No. So, you know, why anything? I suppose it's pretty obvious these days that, you know, organizations depend absolutely on the information that they hold, whether that be about their customers, their business processes, their products, their staff. And if that is threatened, or it's compromised and it's leaked, you know, it's really hard for them to make true fact based decisions because they haven't got access to that information. And it's becoming harder and harder to protect. If I go back to when I first started in business many, many years ago, uh, you know, information data security was just making sure the filing cabinet was closed and locked and who had the actual key to get access to that information because everything was very much stored centrally within our single environment. It was paper-based 
And it was very easy to keep control of that information for it not to leak out or be compromised. Obviously, there was things like fire and theft through to additional business continuity and uh, management of the environment and the office block that I worked in. But it was easy, very, very easy to protect. Nowadays, it's becoming harder and harder for businesses to look at protecting their data. And as I said at the top of the call, you know, it's not just the pandemic. There are a lot of other areas that can address the challenges around information and data security. You know, we all work in an extended ecosystem. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, obviously, as a business, we have uh, third parties that we work with, whether that's IT companies providing infrastructure for us, whether that's uh, legal services, professional services, finance. Uh, but if you're a manufacturer, you will have uh, component manufacturers that will be producing certain elements of your uh, finished goods that you'll be then selling on. You'll be using additional services. And with that comes sharing information and sharing data with that extended eco ecosystem. Obviously, a lot of organizations have already gone through the digital transformation program or are thinking about it or in progress of actually delivering that into their business, looking at ways of taking those traditional paper-based approaches to running the business, to managing business processes, etc., and digitizing them. Obviously, that then comes with challenges around how do you actually protect that information and that data once you've actually got it digital and can now store it and share it who has access to it, when do they have access to it, and do they have the right to view that particular piece of information. Obviously, Internet of Things, I don't know if anyone on the call is heavily into IoT and connected devices, uh, IMEX, Vodafone, so we was massively into, you know, connected cities, connected cars, generating masses and masses of information for organisations, uh, enabling them to improve their business processes and collate a lot more technical information on it might be an IoT device connected to a piece of machinery. Uh, we did a very large project with a well-known drinks manufacturer that we connected all of their vending machines uh, into IoT. So they was all connected. We was taking a lot of the service information back a lot of the component failures and things like that and collating more and more information. And that's really saying that, you know, businesses are evolving, you know, digital transformation, IoT, the extended ecosystem and the digital asset that organizations own control and want to protect are changing in a constant way. But so are the threats. You know, like I said at the top of the call, it, it, the only threat we had before was if somebody broke into the office and got access to the filing system. Nowadays, there are phishing attacks. There are different types of cyber attacks. And those attacks are increasing. And since the pandemic, we've seen a huge increase in cyber security attacks on businesses, uh, whether that be people trying to do a what they call CEO impersonation or business email compromise attacks through to hacking, uh, de dedicated denial of service attacks on organizations. And these attacks are increasing, but so are the vulnerabilities within organizations. Obviously, from a governance point of view, we've obviously got GDPR, which everyone needs to adhere to, but you know, Brexit has brought a lot of different changes around how we manage and how we control data. And doing other compliance areas, you know, GDPR obviously one, PCI DSS, ISO 27001 is another compliance that organizations need to make sure that they're adhering to to manage their information and data security. And obviously, since the whole world has been turned upside down with this global pandemic, that working from home now has become even more prevalent within organizations. And there's been some recent surveys around I think something like 35% of businesses are saying that they probably won't go back to a traditional office-based system. But that brings up other challenges for organizations is how do you control information and access to information by the right people at the right time with the right credentials to do their jobs without limiting them or slowing down their productivity 
when they're actually working from home. So it's areas like multi-factor authentication, you know, VPN technology. I won't try and go too technical, but obviously if anyone does have any technical questions at the end, you know, please feel free to ask or reach out to ourselves. But, you know, this challenge of businesses now having more remote workers means their data is spread further and further out into the ecosystem. It's not just the third party suppliers, it's actually your own staff working from home. You know, how are they managing that data? How are they looking after your information? How is it protected? How is it maintained that it's only available to the right people at the right time with the right credentials, et cetera? Now, management do have a lot of responsibilities within an organization. Obviously, they're looking at the leadership. They're looking at driving the businesses forward. It might be the strategic direction. Do we go this way or do we go that way? Do we try and move into new markets? Do we try and capitalize on new products, services, solutions, etc.? You know, they're setting the goals and the targets for businesses. You know, we want to achieve a 10% growth this year or we want to target a particular new market with a new product and or solution or service. They obviously have to be responsible for all the policies and procedures that are in place. They need to make sure that you're adhering to the correct levels of governance around protection of information and data. And ultimately keeping the businesses running, which has become a big challenge for organizations, especially in the climate that we're in today is making sure that those businesses can remain funded, that they can maintain and continue to service their customers or their partners or however they interact with the market. What they've also got to be responsible for is making sure the business is prepared, that it is prepared to manage its information and data security assets, that the company has the agility to change its business models and its business processes without affecting the productivity and the benefits that are gained from the staff. You know, they have to have obviously that vision, you know, where they want to go as a business. And I spoke around sort of policies and governance, but ultimately the management's responsibility is that accountability to the stakeholder. Now, a stakeholder can be determined as a variety of different roles within business. Now, a lot of people class the stakeholders as purely investors into their own company. It might be venture capitalists, it might be the bank, it might be uh, angels uh, coming in and loaning money to organizations to fund them. But there are far, far many stakeholders within a business ecosystem. There's obviously your customers, you know, they bought into your products and or services, and therefore they have a stake in your success and also a stake in you protecting their information and their data. You know, your staff, you know, when I work for an organization, I look for controls within that organization to make sure that my personal data, my bank details, my date of birth, my national insurance number, uh, my address, uh, my marital status, all of those things are protected because I'm also a stakeholder in that business as well as suppliers, partners, third parties that work with them, associated legal entities that want to work with an organization. These are all stakeholders and management's responsibility is to make sure that information and data is secure for all stakeholders within the business, not just the investors. Now, there's been a lot of changes and threats there. There's obviously the direct threats. Like a lot of organizations, especially with the moving to working from home, have out of date information security policies and procedures. You know, they might have a slightly looser HR security, who can access what information. They might not have kept assets up to date in terms of an asset register and managing those assets within the business. And that asset can be a physical piece of equipment, uh, it can be a server, it can be a laptop, a PC, whatever it might be. But it's also the digital assets within an organization, database of customers, prospects, suppliers, partners, individuals, employees, all needs to be protected. And then managing those access control, who has access to the information? And is it the right type of information that that person can actually have access to? There is a lack of encryption throughout the marketplace. You know, more organizations are now starting to look at encrypting more of their data, both in transit and also at rest. 
but also this lack of physical security. Now, multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, that process of when you're logging into an environment to get access to information about, you know, it might be your customers, it might be products, whatever it might be, there will be a two or three stage process for you to verify that you are who you are. It's moving away from just putting in your credentials and your password, but it's also looking at then bolstering that security with an additional layer, whether that's automatically generated through a third party application or a text code sent to your mobile phone that you then have to put in. But it's making sure that an organization has that. And that's a threat to organizations that don't have that type of technology in place. And then there's the traditional operational security. How do you work as a business? How is the day to day security from how you operate in place? And does it work? And then now there's obviously, again, working from home has affected how we communicate. You know, we're all using a variety of different tools. I'm using, I think, Zoom here or no, Zoho. But I use Zoho, Zoom, Teams, uh, FaceTime, WhatsApp, a whole host of different communication security methodology for communicating with businesses. And all these direct threats have an effect on your information and data. But there's also the indirect threats. Obviously, you're looking to, as I spoke earlier around digital transformation, you know, buying new systems and solutions. But how do they fit into information and data security and how is it protected? How do you manage your third party relationships and make sure that if you are sharing data with a third party organization, that they also meet your governance and compliance standards and can maintain that information in a secure manner? You know, are they doing regular patch management? Have they had any breaches recently? Have they appeared on hacktivist share lists and things like that? All these different areas need to be looked at and addressed. And then how do you actually handle information security incidents? And that incident could be anything from the loss of an individual file down to the loss of your entire data structure. You know, it could be a small minor disaster through to a major disaster. And that all forms part of business continuity to make sure that whatever the disaster, however small or large it is, you are protected as a business. But ultimately, you are protecting your shareholders, your stakeholders within the business. There's also going to be a lot of business process changes. You know, I've seen that especially over the last year that a lot of the changes that have happened in our own business. You know, this working from home all the time, uh, constant different using Zoom meetings, sharing things on SharePoint, intranet drives. You know, our business processes have changed and how we operate as a business has changed. But we still need to think about how that affects information and data security. And these changes can be external effects like Obviously, the pandemic that unfortunately we're all stuck in, them, well, hopefully coming to the end of, touch wood, uh, but also internal changes within the business. You know, if you change direction, if you're moving into a different product set, different line, you're looking at targeting new markets, new areas of business, new challenges. And that brings you on to these new opportunities. And these are all indirect threats that can affect the safety and security of your information and data. Now, there are a couple of a few choices out there that are recognized within the industry uh, and you do have choices. Uh, the first one, Cyber Essentials, that's more of a, a simple checklist. It's a very much a self-assessment. It's required for a lot of small to medium businesses to tender for government work. Uh, it's not a true management system, uh, but it does give assurances that you have thought around information and data security and how you actually manage that particular process. Now, there's an enhancement to that, which is Cyber Essentials Plus, uh, where it is actually reviewed independently and it's a better certification. But again, it's a static evaluation. Uh, it does meet some PDCA guidelines, but it's I would class it as being aspirational at best. And again, it's not a management system and it does have limited recognition outside of the UK. So if you're an international business, it's not widely recognized as being an international standard 
that can be benchmarked against other international organizations. And then obviously the main sort of topic for today is around the sort of ISO 27001, which is a full information security management system or ISMS. It's very much a dynamic, it will change and evolve as your business changes and evolves. And it does require that independent, verifiable, continual improvement that you would go through during an implementation process of adopting ISO 27001. And it's internationally recognized. You know, we operate, uh, and I'll cover that in the next sort of slide or show. So, but we operate in, you know, 17 different countries. And so it's widely recognized as being the only sort of truly international standard around information and data security. Or you may already have an ad hoc ISMS system, uh, but it might be pretty much informal, just documented down, internal processes written down of how you manage data, the privacy policies, how you do encryption, how you give access control, how you delete and get rid of data, how you actually manage the whole life cycle of information and data security. But what you need to bear in mind is you've got to have a structured way to identify all your information assets within an organization. Now, you know, I, we've done thousands of these uh, ISO certifications over the years, and a lot of the information is still, believe it or not, stuck in people's heads. And part of our implementation process, which I'll cover a little bit later on, is, you know, we try and extract that information out and document it, rather than being in Fred's head, around a particular process of how you manage data or information, it's getting that out, mapping it into a standard and building a framework that is documented and shows the processes, which means onboarding of staff is a lot easier and things like that. What you also need to look at is determining what the threats are, whether internal threats through theft of data or access to system or even accidental deletion of data through to external threats that could potentially harm your business, you know, cause damage to your reputation, to your brand, or cost you money in terms of not meeting GDPR or other fines, or just the cost of having to remediate challenges around lost data and information. You know, we've all seen the horror stories in the press around different organizations being handed out fines into the millions, but it's also the remediation costs, notifying all of your customers, the potential future loss of business. You know, new customers are expensive to win and keeping them is an essential part of a business growing over the years. What you also need to do is see how vulnerable you are as an organization. What areas do you are you lacking in security around information and data and then helping you ad adapt to that? by looking at the relevant controls within inside the ISO 27001 framework. I'll talk a little bit in a while around our process for implementing, which is incredibly simple, but it looks at taking your existing processes and mapping them to the framework to make sure you meet the required standards of that international standard that you can then wave as a flag to say that you are a business that takes information and data security seriously. You are that safe pair of hands, not only for your customers, but your suppliers, your partners, your staff, other stakeholders within your business. So why now? Uh, I think obviously around there's lots of different benefits of adopting ISO standards. Uh, out of our over, I think, 25,000 ISO standards that we've adopted or implemented over the years, you know, 13% more business is the average amount of businesses that are winning new business, 13% more business than before they had it. Higher billing, they're not having to go through third parties and margin share because they don't have the required certifications to actually win that piece of business. And over 85% saw an immediate benefit not just in terms of how the business manages its information and data, but more importantly, how the business actually runs, how you onboard new staff, how it helps them improve their onboarding process, speeds up change within a business, helps organizations that are have particular staff that maybe leave to replace them quicker, 
to have less damage from individuals leaving an organization, taking away the knowledge and the information and the processes and the procedures that they know, but not documented and processed anywhere, mapped to a standard, doing business. And it's about, I think, the key thing is giving you better reputation. But it's not basing it on, on your current, uh, sorry, on your previous history of, you know, you're a good company to do business with, you've never had a breach before. It's based actually on your current performance because you've been evaluated, you've been independently assessed. Obviously, as I spoke a few seconds ago, it helps you win more business and be paid more. But it also helps you meet a lot of the compliance, both legal, statutory, regulatory, and also contractual with your customers. Uh, you know, I've worked for a variety of different organizations, some huge like some Vodafone and some small organizations where, you know, you're asked, do you meet this required standard? Do you meet ISO 27001? If you don't, we don't want to do business with you. And or give us your management system of how you actually do it, and how you manage it. And I think it, as I've sort of said on numerous occasions during this last sort of 15, 20 minutes I've been talking, it's about those assurances. It's about that you are that safe pair of hands to all stakeholders that have a stake in your business. Like I said, whether that's employees, the market, the press, customers, suppliers, partners, friends, doesn't matter. It's providing assurances to them that you are a business that takes information and data security seriously. So IMSM. Who are we? You know, we are a very much a specialist consultancy. We focus on, I would say, the SME market. So between one man uh, companies or one woman companies going up to probably about 100 employees tends to be our sort of what we call our sweet spot. Obviously, we do have some very, very large organizations like Toyota, Britvic and lots of other very, very large companies that we work with. Uh, but typically, we focus on the SME about improving their business processes and helping them adopt ISO standards. Uh, we've got over 10,000 clients worldwide and we've done 20 odd thousand plus certifications. Uh, obviously, we can do the UK, but we also have a global reach. And we operate in a very, very simple way. You know, it's very complicated. People having to run businesses these days, pressure is put on them to do a lot of different areas, you know, grow the business, improve operation efficiencies, reduce costs, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a simple approach and a simple process. And it's about delivering really high quality consultancy services that gets you the ISO standards need to operate in a global market. And we, offer, we do it in a very simple way. We are fixed fees. We don't charge you by the number, uh, by your turnover of your business. We don't charge you by a day rate. We operate an incredibly competitive fixed fee structure, which is typically based on the numbers of staff that would interact with the management system, which means that you can budget this quite easily, which means that you can, you know, the exact cost, regardless of how complex your business is, the fees would not change which gives you that security that you're moving towards an ISO standard without having to worry about it costing you additional money or, oh, we didn't have a process for managing encryption, for instance. Oh, is that going to cost me more money to do that? No, it's a fixed fee. You know, we fit around your business. We're not there to tell you how to do your business. We're not here to tell you how to run your business. We fit around your business processes and we just map them into the required standard. What we also do is we assign a dedicated assessor to you. Now, all of our assessors are qualified at the same, or all of our consultants are qualified at the same level as the auditors that would audit you from the independent companies, whether that be a UCAS body like BSI or URS, or an independent certification body like QAS. But it's made, they're trained in the same manner and have the same qualifications, which in effect is like getting somebody to sit the exam who wrote the exam. So it's about adding that extra knowledge around the ISO standard, that it's not just somebody that's learned it from a manual or a book. These are fully qualified, certified auditors that we work as consultants with. And we just look to simply improve the way you work. We map in 
how you work against the framework and provide a full implementation. We're not going to be sending you a load of spreadsheets going right, do all this work or some self-service. It's about a full implementation. And it's, it's really there to make sure that you can concentrate on running your business and we do all the heavy lifting and making sure that if you do want to adopt the ISO 27001 or 9001 or 14 or 45, that it's as trouble free as possible for you as an organization, that it doesn't impact too much on your day to day work. Obviously, we will require input during the implementation process and the consultancy engagement. But it's limited amount of interaction with you, which means most of it these days is done remote, which means you can concentrate on running your business. And the, again, another five step process to implement it. We do a gap analysis. We look at the ISO standard. We look at how you manage your information and data security, and we look for gaps. And then we address those gaps and build the manuals. We will then come back and present them to you for review to see if anything has changed within the business processes. And then we put you forward for certification to help you adopt the standard. We also train an internal auditor that would then keep the systems up to date because as your business evolves over the next 12, 24, 36 months, you need to make sure that your information and data security policies are kept up to date. And we will provide that learning for the internal auditor to keep that up to date. So that when you come for your 12 month and your 24 month review and audit by an independent body, that you're in a very, very good place. And it also helps then use the benefits of ISO into a business to roll it out to the staff, you know, of how they should properly manage information data security, the things they should and shouldn't do, what to do in the event of a breach, what to do if data is lost, et cetera, et cetera. And as it says, you know, we can work independently. QAS is one that we use a lot, or it could be a UCAS body for uh, particular government contracts require UCAS, which is somebody like URS uh, based in, I think, on the South Coast or BSI, the British Standard Institute. And then your certificates issued. It doesn't just end there. We have copywriters that can help you do things like press releases, case studies. We'll give you logos to put on your website and help you promote that you are an ISO organization, because that's where you get the real value when your customers, prospects start seeing how that you are a business that takes their information and their data that they're sharing with you, whether it just be their name and address and telephone number, or it's intellectual property or confidential contract information, that you are a business that takes that information and data security seriously. So we can help with all of that as well. Now, I don't want to be too much of a doom and gloom man, but it is a dangerous and unpredictable world out there at the moment. And with the increase in cyber attacks, uh, I think Maria put one in the chat window about an organization that's hit by a cyber attack and it's took them you know, a week to get all their information and data back. And it's, they're still not operational yet. But what you need to do is make sure that you're securing the information that it's only got access to the right people at the right time with the right credentials but then prove it by having an iso standard like iso 27001 you know stakeholders do have high expectations for organizations you know a lot of organizations are looking to streamline the numbers of suppliers that they actually have as well so it's making sure that you're at the top of the tree seen as a progressive business that manage their information and data security in a policy driven process way that has got an international standard that's recognized globally. And, you know, we're in this sort of, it's probably one of the most overused phrases on the planet at the moment, this sort of new normal. And it means that, you know, change will happen faster and faster. We could all hopefully, again, touch wood, go back to working in office environments in the next two to three months. Or, another outbreak could happen and we could end up going back home to work again or some other challenges will come into the marketplace new threats emerging new different types of cyber attacks are coming out all the time and it means that you know changes into business and how people manage their information and data will change at a rapid and faster pace than ever and now it's time to be sort of ahead of the curve and ahead of your competition to differentiate yourself uh, 
I run personally, I do a, what we call a free ISO 27001 benefits and impact review and report where I can sit down with you. It only takes about an hour of your time. And we'll just go through the sorts of key areas that ISO 27001 addresses and just see where you fit into that. See how much ISO 27001 you've already adopted. And I'm more than happy to do that. I will send out uh, a copy of this slide deck, which will have my contact details on. You know, feel free to reach out to me. And obviously, please visit imsm.com to have a look at uh, any relevant new information. We've got lots of things around the industry, around how ISOs are changing, new uh, different standards coming out, etc. And it's a very good wealth of information for anybody interested in policies, processes, procedures and governance around not just information and data, it could be quality, health and safety, environmental, medical devices, business continuity, IT, a whole host of different areas. And there's a lot of additional information on imsm.com, so feel free to go on there. What I'd like to do now is just open it up to any questions. If you could please type them into the Q&A window. So if there are any questions, let me just drop a quick message. If you don't mind, I'll extend this slightly on the, uh, on the attack I mentioned previously. Uh, only you can see my comments because I am attending as, a, as an attendee, so um, I referred to, prior to starting the, the presentation to the equivalent in Spain to what we have here known as um, the job center. So on March the 14th, the Spanish job center suffered a heavy uh, cyber attack and they barely started to recover only two weeks after the event and still cannot restore all the uh, all the services to unemployed people that was my comment yeah we're, we're certainly seeing a lot more of those types of uh, attacks where you know information is incredibly valuable to organizations and the hackers know this that's why they target it they either to do two main types of attack. It's normally either stopping a business being running or getting access and selling on their information and data or blackmailing them uh, into uh, holding their information in a secure manner and threatening to leak it out. But either way, these sorts of attacks are increasing all the time. And, you know, attacks happening in third party suppliers of organizations as well. So it's not just necessarily your own information and data security that needs to be taken. You might want to be asking your suppliers, you know, are they an ISO 27001 organization? Do they look after your data, your information that you're sharing with them? Or can they, if they're providing you with a service or piece of equipment or uh, anything really, can they continue to do that in the event of a breach or if they're attacked? You know, are they, do they have the required processes, procedures in place to mitigate those types of attacks? So you need to be asking also that of your own supply chains, you know, make sure yes. take your information security seriously. But does not like the questions yeah. right? To, to, to come back to my initial statement about the job center and unemployed people, uh, if we get, uh, start from there, it becomes also clear that such an attack, it was supposed to be a Russian attack as well, um, has a huge impact not only on vulnerable data, but on vulnerable people as well. So for unemployed people not being able to be paid for more than one month, it means that we have we may have some mental issues as a result as well so that's a huge and complex issue uh steven you are mute 
a lot. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of attacks recently on, certainly in the UK, on health service and also into the supply chains for the virus, uh, for the vaccine. Sorry. So, you know, this there are some despicable people out there, and it's just making sure that a business is doing everything that they possibly can to protect themselves. But uh, any final questions before we close this down? I can't see anything on my side. Ah, no, there's just one from uh, one from. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. And if you just blast over, you, I think you've got my email address. If not, it was on the slide. It's Stephen with a PH Stobo S T O B O at IMSM dot com. Uh, what's this one? Sorry, if my personal information is attacked without my knowledge, and um, what want to the attacker, how will I go about it? Because many times I receive messages, emails, phone calls, SMS from people. I'm not connecting to. Yeah, <laughs> again, there's there's a variety of different ways of finding out uh, if your data has been involved in a data breach. Uh, there are lots of threat intelligence feeds. There are free threat intelligence feeds. Uh, you have to be careful which ones you put your email address into, uh, but. <laughs> If you go onto some of the more reputable sites that are promoted by Google, et cetera, you can literally put your email address in and it will tell you if you have appeared in a data breach. Also, things like simple things for uh, personal users is I, I use an iPhone, a uh, bit of an old one, but I still use an iPhone. And I get notification if any of my passwords have been shared on data breaches through my iPhone. But, you know, as a business, you know, I subscribe to a lot of different threat intelligence feeds that gives me information between that. And I think this one's, I, I covered that. This one's for you, Maria. Difference between SOC 2 and ISO 27001 from a technical point of view. From a technical point of view, uh, <laughs> well, um, ISO 27001 is an international standard uh, recognized in one, 165 countries, uh, as opposite to everything which is more local, uh, as you, Stephen, uh, um, described during the, the session. And 27001 offers a set of 114 controls. Most of those controls cannot be skipped, so only a few actually may not apply. And companies as well are welcome to add new controls, uh, as well as the most important thing from a technical point of view, ISO 27001 involves uh, senior management into the uh, standard implementation, review and modification if necessary as steven said during the presentation it's a dynamic standard uh, which allows it to be flexible and fully adaptable not only to your organizations but also to your environment iso management standard systems are focused not on internal issues but on the external business environment such as your shareholders, uh, your employees, um, authorities, if you like, every single citizen and the society itself are affected by your actions and you are affected by their actions. So the standards regards protection from a global point of view and dynamic. I hope I've answered the question. I'm, I'm sure you have, Maria. There are, there's only a couple of other areas because obviously SOC 2 is primarily around the sort of access for data and how it's actually controlled. And there are, you know, security, availability, process integrity, I can't remember the other two, uh, where ISO 27001 will go into more detail around 
you know, asset management, communication security, physical environmental security, supplier relations, the, the can't say that, supplier relationships, human resource security, system acquisitions, development and maintenance, and goes into a lot more areas around that. And it, to me, it would be a nice compliment if an organization I was dealing with uh, both SOC 2 and also I say 27,001. So I hope I hope that covered it. Let me just go back to slides if there's any more. I hope there will be some continued professional development. Brilliant. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending this webinar. I hope you found it useful. Like I said, we run a variety of these different webinars. In fact, I think I'm doing another ISO 27001 in May, I think, and I think another one in June. Uh, you know, feel free to come along again or invite any of your colleagues to it and we'll obviously notify you. Like I said, if you follow uh, IMSM on LinkedIn, you'll get all the latest information around a whole variety of different ISO standards and how we have helped thousands of businesses improve their business processes, enhance their reputation, grow their market share and improve their customers. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for attending and feel free to reach out to either myself or Maria and with any further questions and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, everyone.